Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show on KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Welcome to our greatest show on earth. And we're not Ringling Brothers and Barley Service, but we are one of the best business shows out there. <laughs> are you sure we're not the circus? I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> well, we, every, every, everyone needs a clown, right? Um, and, uh, <laughs> and I have very, very big shoes. And they're very colorful. And I also have a <laughs> air, air horn. <laughs> yeah, where's the we and where and where? We don't have anything. You know, come on, come on, Carl. Anyway, we're on our own today. Everybody's got COVID. No, nah, we're drinking too much Maybe coffee. That's the problem. The today. Because of our guest, I decided <laughs> to drink a cup of coffee in his honor. And now, uh, now I'm all ramping, racing against the road. But some people have never watched the show, uh, listened to the show, and. Our guest has never listened to the show, so he doesn't know what's going on. But to try to bring him back to earth, our name of our show is Ask Brian, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N. And every week we have an episode where we try to teach people something about business, something about a startup, or usually something about a CEO that you can learn something about business. But everybody asks us, if you haven't listened to the show, uh, you don't know. But the people that do, they obviously do know why. Miss Tracy, do we spell Brian with an E? Well, we spell Brian with an E for a lot of extraordinary reasons, most of all of which that start with E. But our primary first one, we love to credit our engineer. However, our engineer, Emily, is down with COVID. So they've thrown us to the wolves today. We're all on our own. and uh, but But that's an exception to how it usually is. <laughs> I don't know if it's an exception, but okay. <laughs> an exception means it happens and, once in a while. And so we also, because we interview a lot of experts, which I'm very excited about our expert today, and uh, we have we do that so that we can educate entrepreneurs. How about that? What do you mean educate entrepreneurs? And by the way, isn't an entrepreneur with a knee? Yeah, exactly. I thought you were. I thought you would be really impressed by that, but clearly you weren't. <laughs> it takes a lot to impress me. And <laughs> impress is with an I, not an E. <laughs> that's true. That's that's not an impress. E M. Ma- well, maybe in England they might so, do that impression. <laughs> you might be right. Um, so, and as a result of our experts being able to educate. We also provide a lot of, well, I know one of the words that you really like a lot is in, are you going to say it or are you going to make me say it? I'm going to make you say it. Enthusiasm. And excitement. Excitement, 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 excitement. 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 Woo! Oh, yeah, that coffee is definitely kicking in for you. Um, (laughs) And so that means we always have a lot of high energy. And we always have a lot of expertise. And let's see, which one am I missing? I well, you're not very experienced one. in doing this because if you were experienced, you would remember. <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely right about that. Where is Emily when you need her or Patty for that matter? Because and something I don't always... do for something I don't do for you, which is I don't empathize with you. Oh yes, you never show me any empathy, but we show our guests empathy, um, especially if they stick with us through this long diatribe of uh, interact uh, engagement. <laughs> and don't forget, grease lightning, because we are electrifying. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Okay, please, that's got to be enough. Let's well, introduce our fabulous guest. Without any further ado, yes. A-D-I-E-U. How do you spell a do? A D I E U. And why do I like that word? Because it's all consonants and very. No, it's all vowels. One consonant. One consonant. I have dyslexia. Don't be empathetic. What does that mean? I really, I really don't. I just said that to make you feel bad. Um, all consonants and only one vowel. And and even though Brian is usually the O'Brien pub down the street in Ireland, uh, we don't have the uh, pub today. today Patrick is out. Co- today we're in a coffee shop. Today we're in a coffee shop. We're not well, I can still pub. put uh, – yes, but I can have an Irish coffee, and then I can put some liquor in it. 
That way I'll be okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, you can I'm not your I'm not your award. I'm not your award. I'm not anyway. the, I'm not the boss of your coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a great guest today and he's probably going, "What did I sign up for? I'm going to have to call up my uh, publicist and go, "Why am I here?" But <laughs> if he's still around. <laughs> still here. I think, I think we still have him. Okay. So our guest's name, I'm going to hopefully pronounce it correctly. Andrew Salisbury, is that correct? That's it, yeah. And the name of your company is Purity Coffee. So first of all, uh, before we get into a little discussion about that, what is your background prior to starting Purity Coffee? It's very, very different than coffee. I actually um, I built up a software company in Latin America um, in basically in, in five countries, but we had installations in, in 13 different countries, and uh, and then I sold that in 2011. And uh, um, so couldn't couldn't be more different. I went from selling you know million dollar enterprise software systems to you know 100 companies that I that I knew of. Um, to selling, you know, bags of coffee. So it was, it was a, uh, it was drinking from a fire hose. Well, and, and what kind of what kind of software is this? Contact center software. So um, anytime you've got people making or receiving large amounts of phone calls, we had companies that had forty, fifty thousand agents in some cases in Brazil. Um, you know, just literally making or receiving phone calls, and this was software that would facilitate that and make it uh, make it more efficient. So basically in America, if I want to call the bank or the cable TV company or the telephone company, pretty much that's where I'm going to be. I'm going to be lost in the in the whim of the contact software, and you're the guys that produce it. Is that correct? Yeah, it was not very popular. It's, uh, there was nothing. <laughs> there was no. There, there was no passion behind the product. The products that I sold, I can I can tell you, it was uh, we were the we were responsible for bothering you at dinner with the uh, predictive dialer calls. So now this concept is the favorite of our co-host. And so how did you pivot from selling software <laughs> into coffee? <laughs> Set yeah, empathize, a, Trace. <laughs> I'll give you the shorter version of the story. It's a sort of long story, but um, when I sold my company, I, I wasn't anxious to look for anything to do um, and just took some time looking at different projects. And um, But around the same time, um, my wife and I and daughter took a year off and we traveled the world. And, and, and then when we came back, um, my wife started getting some real um, sort of what seemed like very serious health issues. We're not, we wouldn't, we still don't know what they were, um, but very low energy. And she was just drinking a lot of coffee, um, like a lot of us do, to sort of like motivate to get out of bed in the morning. And she was she was relying more on her coffee uh, than I felt like she should. And up to that point, um, I was a tea drinker. I mean, you can probably tell I'm originally from England. And uh, as a tea drinker, I was trying to persuade her that she needed to give up on her coffee because it couldn't be good for you. Um, the, my sort of my, my rationale was that uh, her body was telling her she needed energy uh, or needed rest, and she was giving it caffeine and forcing it to do something it wasn't able to do, and uh, and that wasn't good. So we had a few arguments about her giving up coffee, and and sort of the the crux of it was she said, you know, like probably most of us would, um, I'm not giving up my coffee unless you can you can validate it with lots and lots of proof. Um, so um, I met two professors at the Institute of Coffee Studies in Vanderbilt, and that was part of my journey of researching the health benefits of coffee. And then, you know, basically, um, it didn't take me long to realize that I was I was completely wrong. Um, that the health benefits of coffee uh, are huge, and there's a there's a massive gap between what the scientific community knows about the health benefits of coffee and the general public. So that's sort of how I that was the first step, I guess. And, and and I don't want to get too uh, detailed, but so what are the significant differences uh, that scientists and, and, and the public knows regarding coffee uh, that you've discovered? Give well, us two or three. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spend yeah. two hours on it. Well, the first one, which I think is most interesting, is is coffee is the number one source of antioxidants in the American diet if you're a coffee drinker. So while antioxidants reduce inflammation in the body, um, doctors are starting to or, or have for a number of years realized that, that, that excess inflammation causes disease in the body and all over the body. And so that we should try and have a, a diet which is very rich in antioxidants. So that can be, you know, from red fruit to, um, to cruciferous vegetables, um, kale and, and broccoli and just these things that we've been told that we should be eating for a good, well-balanced diet. 
if you drink coffee three to five cups a day, your number one source of antioxidants is, is coming from your coffee. One, because it's very high in antioxidants. Naturally, it's one of the top foods in antioxidants. And two, you're going to consume it every day without really forgetting about it. So I say the antioxidants are probably the biggest driver. Well, not probably. They are the biggest driver to the health benefits that, uh, that we're seeing in coffee. Now, uh, how does that apply for, for caffeine? Because there are other drinks that have caffeine in it. Tea does have caffeine. And sometimes people tell me that caffeine in tea might be even higher than coffee. And then you've got drinks like Monster and Red Bull, whatever. I'm sure they have caffeine in them. And I guess you can even get pure caffeine. So what, what is the yeah. distinction with coffee? Well, and this is a really important point. Coffee contains caffeine. Coffee is not caffeine. So uh, meaning that that is one of the compounds inside of coffee and is one of the things that we attribute the benefits of, uh, of coffee to. We, you know, we like to wake up in the morning and it gives us energy, but really caffeine is just one of the players out of many players in, 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 in coffee. The bigger player in coffee, the one that's attributed to the health benefits, is a thing called chlorogenic acids, and they're the polyphenols or the antioxidants in the coffee. So you can get a lot of the same health benefits from a uh, Swiss water decaf coffee than you can with a regular coffee. It's not the caffeine that creates the health benefits. It's just a, it's a, you know, a, a player to the party. And uh, this is the last question I'm going to ask, then we're going to go more into the business side. Uh, isn't there a way that we could split out the chlorogenic so that we could just have a product that just had that so you don't have to deal with the caffeine and the other parts of coffee? It's a, it's a very good question, um, and, and we've worked with the University of Brazil and Professor Adriana Farrar, who's you know one of the top coffee scientists in the world, and she said one of the frustrations for both pharmaceutical companies and, and people who are looking at supplements is they've never been able to, to reproduce the health benefits um, from uh, coffee just by signaling out a compound. So what happens in coffee, there's literally – thousands of compounds that are both created and destroyed in the roasting of coffee. And so it's, it's, it's more of an orchestra than it is any one in instrument. It's not, while it's chlorogenic acids, the antioxidants are the, um, the biggest driver. There's 11 different chlorogenic acids to look at. There's things like dithopines, uh, uh, diterpenes, depending how you pronounce it, um, like cafestol, caweol, uh, compounds like trigonoline. And, and so the, the bottom line is, it's all of these working together in concert rather than any one thing that you could single, you know, separate out. Wow, wow, wow. So first of all, this chemistry lesson is way above my head, but uh, I'm still <laughs> trying to figure out what H2O is. Anyway. Um... <laughs> That's right. Don't laugh. Anyway. Um... <laughs> what, uh, what, Couldn't what, help it. How did you – how did you create this company? I mean, so it started with your wife, okay? You decided that yeah. coffee was it. Okay, so but how do you go from, okay, you know, uh, you know, uh, kale has good benefits too. You didn't start a kale company. How did you, how did you get involved in this? How did you start it? it? It took me a long while to actually decide if there was a company at the end of this. So I had the luxury of, uh, of time, and also I was really enjoying the research. And so the way it worked initially is I, um, the, the two professors at the Institute of Coffee Studies introduced me to Dr. Adriana Farrar in Brazil. I spent a lot of time in Brazil, and um, after talking to her a few times, I offered her a basic consulting contract that was meant to be two to three months of just give me an education on coffee and health. And she's one of the top scientists in the world when it comes to that. You know, she consults for the World Health Organization, so she really is one of the, the, the best people in the world um, to to work with. And so um, that three months of just education turned into about 18 months. And, and the, the, initially, my, 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 my thing was, okay, so if, if coffee is so good for you, I'm, I'm convinced, what would happen if you made every decision based on health? And that's sort of what gave uh, what, what made her curious. As she started looking at this, she said, nobody's ever done that. I mean, there's, there's, we know coffee is healthy and we know why it's healthy, but no one company has focused on every decision based on health without a compromise. And so we started looking at every step. And there was obviously a lot of risk in, in trying to create a business from that. So there was a certain stage in the first 18 months where I felt like, okay, this is, this is really interesting where, you know, it, we can make all these different decisions and the coffee is great but but will people buy coffee based on health and will we get a measure 
that we've actually made a difference with all the things that we've done. So 18 months into it, we tested our coffee against top 49 brands of coffee in the U.S. that represents most of the coffee, 85 percent of the coffee in the U.S. And we we tested it against you know very good organic specialty coffee and the Folgers, Maxwell Houses of this world, and Starbucks and Pete's and and all of the all of the companies in between. And what we were measuring for is the absence of bad stuff. So there's things like heavy metals and there's mycotoxins and there's certain bad things you don't want in your coffee, pesticide residues, that sort of thing. But more importantly, it was the presence of good stuff. Could we make a difference in the amount of antioxidants in the coffee that we that, 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 that we were sort of curating? Um, and then, you know, basically after about 18 months, um, the lab test came back and we were – number one highest in antioxidants anywhere from two to ten times higher than any of the coffees we tested. So that was the point where I said, you know, there's got to be people who are primarily health conscious, um, who happen to be coffee drinkers, who would love our coffee rather than people who are primarily coffee drinkers. Um, you know, so the, the, the lens changed a little bit. I'm, I was looking for people who were more passionate about the health benefits of coffee. Um, and, and, and that was sort of the... That was the first step, but I will tell you honestly, it was a series of deep breaths. Um, this was, I knew enough of our business to know that moving from a business that I was successful in, which was completely different to one which I had no experience in was not a smart move. So I was looking for various off ramps along the way, making sure that I could get out of the business if I felt like we were, um, you know, we had any, any deal breakers. And, and that's, to be honest, what I looked for for a long while is I fully expected to find something that I that that, that I wasn't um, recognizing in the early stage of the business, but that that never happened. Well, we we have about thirty five forty seconds before we have to take a break, but um, okay. So now you've got all this, you know, you know that it's a viable concept. But uh, I mean, did you invest your own money? Did you bring in other partners? How, how did you start? I did. I invested my own money, and my philosophy on this is that I wouldn't have invested in the business in the early stage as an outside investor without knowing all the things that I knew. So it was too difficult to go to outside, looking for outside capital. I wanted to de-risk the business. So I had a set of criteria of things that I was looking for, but I said, if I can prove this, if I can validate that people will buy coffee based on health, that they'll buy our coffee based on health and spend more money for it, that they'll continue to drink it and refer their friends, I'll reach a stage where some other company would like to take um, this venture and, 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 and expand on it because they would have a bigger footprint. So that was I, I focused on de-risking the business before I looked at outside capital, and, and I actually haven't uh, up to this point got outside capital. Well, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're listening to KHS 1220, 98.1 FM. Do you remember Bill O'Reilly? He was a talk show host on Fox News. What would he say now about the latest from the Biden administration? We're happy to tell you Bill O'Reilly has joined KHTS Radio for No Spin News. He cuts through the spin and gives you a fair, smart, fact-based analysis. It's your dose of common sense for Santa Clarita. Hear about the latest craziness from Washington. Join Bill O'Reilly every Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. It's the No Spin News on KHTS 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Helping lead the way to a greener future, all of Burtech's Santa Clarita Valley waste collection trucks run on clean, burning natural gas. Burtech takes pride in their community, and they've been serving the SCV for nearly two decades. Because at Burtech, we'll take care of it. It's a hit. Audiences are loving Something Rotten, playing out the Canyon Theater Guild. The year is 1595, and Shakespeare is a rock star. A rival acting troupe can't compete with The Bard. They need something new, exciting, never before done. Laugh your way back in time to the Renaissance with this hilarious show featuring tap dancing, Shakespeare, and the origins of the musical. Get your tickets today by calling 661-799-2702 or reserve online at canyontheater.org. This is Bradley from Santa Clarita Grocery, the all-volunteer grocery program serving children, families, and individuals experiencing food insecurities. Since January 2020, Santa Clarita Grocery has distributed 83 tons of fresh groceries to 4,465 families in the SCV. Santa Clarita Grocery is a drive-up, drive-through service with physical distancing in place to continue serving our community. 
If you are in need or looking for a charity to do the most good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery, one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. A full 99 cents out of every dollar goes directly back to the community. Santa Clarita Grocery operates on a 1% overhead and is sustained through private donations. Santa Clarita Grocery is at 21176 Center Point Parkway in the Oasis Furniture Parking Lot. Please visit our website, santaclaritagrocery.org, or our Facebook at Santa Clarita Grocery to make a difference in our awesome town community 661-425-7575 be our guest and experience the difference at jersey mike's we make a sub above bread baked fresh veggie served crisp meat and cheese sliced on the spot then comes the juice red wine vinegar and olive oil blended to perfection is what makes a jersey mike sub a sub to behold and beholding well we think that works best with two hands Jersey Mike's, be a sub above. Your Santa Clarita Jersey Mike's, a proud sponsor of Santa Clarita Sports. Do you remember Bill O'Reilly? He was a talk show host on Fox News. What would he say now about the latest from the Biden administration? We're happy to tell you Bill O'Reilly has joined KHTS Radio for No Spin News. He cuts through the spin and gives you a fair, smart, fact-based analysis. It's your dose of common sense for Santa Clarita. Hear about the latest craziness from Washington. Join Bill O'Reilly every Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 p.m. It's the No Spin News on KHTS 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. No words can describe the power of belonging to a group of close friends or being part of a family. Insight Treatment Center was founded more than 20 years ago to give teenagers a community of friends and family as they overcome issues like depression, anxiety, and trauma. The new Santa Clarita location is a COVID-secure environment where distance and good airflow are a priority. As a leader in providing intensive outpatient treatment to teenagers, Insight Treatment Center in Santa Clarita is here to help. Call 888-295-9995 or go online to insighttreatment.com. Hometown, your hometown station. And radio show on KHS 1220, 98.1 FM. We have our great guest, Andrew. Tracy is our co-host. Tracy had a couple of questions. She said, Peter, enough already. I need to ask some serious questions. So you're on, Trace. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, speaking of serious, I mean, we were having a really great conversation during the break about the growth that you've experienced with your company. Um, two things that were really interesting to me that I'd love to highlight to our audiences. One is that um, you have continued to be self-funding, which you mentioned before, but also the level of growth that you've achieved in this amount of time. Can you share with us like you know, ranges of your revenue expectations and then how the self-funding has played into that piece of it? Yeah. Um, so consistently we've grown. Um, we, we sold our first bag of coffee at the end of 2016, and we've grown about 25% a quarter, every quarter compounding. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a great exponential growth curve. You know, we'll finish this year um, without anything exceptional. It'll be 10 million plus. So, for a coffee company, I think it's, that's relatively small, but we're fast growing, and and I think we've 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 shown that there's a there's a, a segment in this market which is very interested in the health benefits of coffee. And in terms of self funding, have you had to continue to self fund since 2016, or has it been the company become self sufficient? I think we. Um, I, I, I want to say I haven't written a check for three years, so I mean it's not been. Um, you know, I think it. I think it was one or two years after the initial setup that we were funding the company, and then afterwards, I think it's. It's. In fact, I'm, I'm sure there's been no additional funding. So the company, what we do is we're not running for profit; we're running for growth. So we're we're reinvesting all available sort of free cash back into into growth, and we're looking for people who are very health conscious as supporters. So you know affiliates and uh, that sort of thing that are that are health conscious. 
That's fantastic. Do you attribute the majority of the growth through the diversification of your products? Um, I know the health benefits are certainly one of the big driving forces, and I'm not underestimating that. But at the same time, it feels like, I mean, that's a pretty substantial compounded growth trajectory. And I would just love for people who are in a situation where they're launching a food and beverage product product, um, to really understand, like, what are some of the factors outside of the health benefits that contributed to such exponential growth? Well, I think primarily uh, it's 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 not the it's not brand extensions, it's not marketing. I think primarily is the fact that we've had some amazing people who've helped us with the the quality of the product. I mean, I know that sounds sort of glib, but it's but it was eighteen months of research doing things that no other coffee company does. I mean, we we decided that our North Star was making every decision based on health and making all of those decisions that were different. And you know, I can go through a shopping list of decisions that we make differently than any other coffee company and the ones that matter and why they matter. But the bottom line is that that the product stands by itself. So for the majority of time, we only just recently, about a year ago, we started doing digital sales. So we started doing Facebook and Instagram and all that sort of stuff. Up until that point, it's all been word of mouth. And so, you know, word of mouth is coming from the quality of the product. It's not coming from incentives or marketing or sales. And and so I I... I I would say that the, the the big reason why we've been so successful in fast growth is 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 concentrating without any sort of um, uh, any compromise on the quality of the product when it comes to health. Which I love, but I also was curious um, in terms of diversifying your revenue streams. Is the majority of that coming through? Wholesale business is that coming? Because if you were just now getting into the digital and selling online, who were who was your primary customer base, restaurants, wholesale, no, it's always been direct to consumer. I um, mean, you know, we felt like, and when we talk about de-risking the business and talking about, you know, the different plateaus of the business, the first stage that I was looking at in order to de-risk the business is I wanted to prove that people would buy coffee based on health and they would buy it again and tell their friends. Um, there was a lot of value in starting online because I had data and information about my customers that I wouldn't have had if I just tried on a retail play. So it was more important for me to learn about what my customers thought about our product than it was to increase sales at a faster growth rate. I don't know if that helps. So all of so all of your business so it's all B to C. Are you planning on any kind of expansion into wholesale uh, restaurants, establishments, things like that? What are what are your next areas for growth? Not for the foreseeable future unless it's directly in line with our brand. So I would love to work with a true food kitchen or a very healthy chain of restaurants or I'd like to juice bars or people who are really focused on the health benefits or even gyms or GNC, that sort of thing. But I'm not interested in being in a Whole Foods or in your Publix for the simple reason that I think if you walk by 20 or 30 bags of coffee, you're not going to gravitate to Purity Coffee because we've got a good looking bag. You need to know what that what the benefits are and why you'd pay effectively top dollar for a coffee when you can get a much cheaper coffee, you know, on the shelf. And so we feel like building the brand out first is more important to us than uh, than than just um, trying to uh, increase revenue. And what are some of the marketing strategies? You mentioned the digital advertising and for business development, but what are some of the marketing strategies that you've used effectively to build that brand out? Um, it's well, I mean, I suppose the main the main thrust, the main marketing strategy that that has worked is that we we never positioned ourselves where coffee is. We positioned ourselves where health is. So you would find us in nutritionist trade shows, dietitian trade shows, integrated medicine trade shows. Um, we've built up a body of over 2,000 nutritionists, dietitians, integrated medicine doctors that get a dis- discount on our coffee. And, and as a result of that, because they drink our coffee, they end up referring their patients. So it wasn't really a transactional play, but it was something where we felt like the sharp end of the spear, the people who really who were really recommending what food to eat for people who were, who had health conditions, we wanted to make sure they were educated about the health benefits of coffee. And I think that is a lot slower moving, but I think it's a much more assailable, unassailable position. And so, so it sounds to me like trade show marketing has been a, a really successful vehicle for you. 
how was that? How did that impact you during the pandemic when a lot of the trade shows and industry conferences were put on hold? Yeah, it was difficult. We had to change gears. Um, so obviously, all the trade trade shows were cancelled. And in fact, we were coming out with a product um, in um, in April um, when uh, when COVID just uh, hit and everyone went into lockdown, which was a, a product called Pocket Purity, which was our coffee in a sachet. And it's sort of nitrogen flush, so it's a single serve. So it's almost like creating a pour over. And so we realized after, you know, just after everyone went to lockdown, we couldn't possibly launch with what was effectively a, a way to drink our coffee when you're traveling. It was to fill a need for when, when you're traveling so you can carry it with you and, and not have the whole setup. And so what we ended up doing is we donated about $50,000 worth of coffee to all the hospitals on the front lines, you know, starting with New York and then working on down as it happened. And that created a lot of goodwill, and also um, it also created, um, you know, the, just the the, the 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 testing of our coffee. So we had people that we really cared about trying our coffee, but at the same time we uh, um, we could we could use this inventory that obviously we couldn't launch with, you know, with COVID. Yeah, that, that's not only so smart, but that's, that's such a thoughtful thing to do as well, especially during that window of time. Uh, so you mentioned your new product, which uh, at that you mentioned the new product at that time, which was the sachet. Can you walk us through some of the different product lines, and maybe um, as you walk us through, can you do it from an from an evolutionary from a timeline perspective of what what your first product was, and then how you evolved into the different products that you're offering. Yeah. So, so internally with the company, we 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 won't make any decision unless it follows our north star, which is that every decision based on health without compromise. So we started with just original coffee, and the reason with our original roast is that it's it's um, basically it's it's sourced. Um, we check coffees from around the world, sourcing for the highest in antioxidants. It needs to be organic, regeneratively farmed, shade grown. There's all sorts of criteria for the coffee, and then it needs to be roasted to. Make maintain the antioxidants. And we felt, okay, that's the very best coffee that we could produce for health. And so we had one coffee for for really the first two years. And then um, we recognized that there was the same health benefits in a lot of cases, and let's say 90% of the cases, not in things like Parkinson's, but definitely in things like uh, um, liver disease from having a coffee that's decaffeinated. So we started sourcing um, coffee that, that, that was, the, or not sourcing, we started looking at places that we could decaffeinate our coffee. There's four ways of doing a decaf coffee. Um, two of them are healthy and two of them aren't. So the two that are healthy are Swiss water and critical CO2. And what they do is they basically naturally uh, take the caffeine out of the coffee and they lose none of the compounds like the chlorogenic acids and the stuff that we want in the coffee when they reintroduce it. So um, we provide Swiss water. And so it's obviously it's a little bit more expensive. It's more expensive for us. For us. Um, but, you know, it's it's the only method, apart from sending coffee to Germany, which is critical CO2, that would, that, uh, that would make sure that we're not losing any of the compounds that we, we care about. Um, and then, you know, later on, we started looking at some of the studies that came out. There was uh, chlorogenic acids, are the, what we talked about as being one of the things that you have the big health benefit from. But there's... But but from chlorogenic acids, as you roast the coffee, as the coffee gets darker, you lose the chlorogenic acids. Now, that, that means you lose some of the health benefits, so why would you want to have a darker roasted coffee? What we discovered is this thing called chlorogenic lactones, and chlorogenic lactones come from the chlorogenic acids in a darker roast, and it's gentler on the stomach, so it's easier to digest. So people who have health issues and, and have a difficulty digesting coffee, it's better for them, but it also has better blood-brain um, uh, access, so it's like it, it gets through the blood-brain barrier. Um, more effectively, and, and so that's uh, that's the reason we came out with the darker roast, and, and you know we're continuing to evolve with that and experiment with that, where every decision has to be made based on health, not based on you know what the whether it's commercially viable. I mean, a great example of that is that um, we haven't uh, we don't sell our coffee grounds. Um, we don't sell a coffee ground, even though 70% of people buy coffee pre-ground or ground pre-ground. Uh, they buy the coffee ground. 
Um, the reason we don't sell it ground is because um, the coffee oxidizes and you lose some of your lipids. So if you open your bag of coffee, the first cu cup of coffee or the first um, you know co pot of coffee that you make is fresh. But every subsequent pot the next day and the day after that, you're losing the lipids that that that, uh, that factor into the health, and those lipids are becoming rancid. So you know we don't compromise, even though commercially it would probably be better to do that. Yeah, I mean, I love the conviction that you have around the product. It also looks like that you have evolved not just in the uh, selling the actual coffee beans themselves, but it also looks like you've expanded into merchandise and subscription gifts. Is the subscription gift model a good recurring revenue opportunity for you, and how does that work? It's very good. I mean, it's very strong. I mean, about 75% of our, of our customers are on recurring subscription. Um, typically, the trend is people will, you know, we don't want to force customers into doing anything that, that, you know, they need to do the thing that's most convenient for them. But typically what happens, they'll order our coffee once or twice a la carte and then move to subscription. I mean, we've had we've had um, consumers that have been with us for five years since the very first bag of coffee. So it's, um, you know, it, it is it is very much of a subscription model. Um, they get a 20% discount if they subscribe. And I think people like the convenience and not having to think about it and know that the coffee has been. So if you're on subscription, we're roasting the coffee and sending it you that day. So you're receiving the coffee a day or two days after roasting. So, you know, you're just getting a really good quality product. Um, and that's the advantage of subscription for us. And is the merchandise just something that you do as a supplement to that? Yeah, I mean, you have uh, your branding and your uh, and your merchandise is really nice. It's not – the reason it's not really – we haven't put a lot of attention to it is I know there are coffee companies. I mean, Black Rifle does a fantastic job um, with their merchandise and say, you know, who they are as a company. Our goal, the, the reason we did this is because we wanted to have a way of educating our consumers about our products. So, you know, we have a T-shirt that says, you know, jokingly, let, let coffee be thy medicine from uh, the, the Hippocratic Oath. I mean, so we're just trying to give a message, and, and I don't know whether – that will ever be a brand extension that we that we focus on. Our issue is really that that this is a we're first rung on a ladder. This is a this is going to be a very big segment. People will be buying coffee based on health. Right now they buy based on taste and convenience and cost. But if they knew what I knew about the health benefits of coffee, they'd be buying based on health. And I think that we're going to have a, a lot of companies entering to, into this market, and I would encourage that. Um, and uh, but I just think that we have to remain focused um, and not get distracted from things that other companies could do. So where so I mean I love I mean you're very convicted to the quality of your product. You have a very specific niche that you stay in line on, and that you are um, continuously refining and honing, improving. So where are your areas for growth? Are you planning on staying on the same uh, B2C trajectory? I know we talked a little bit about wholesale, so I don't mean to be redundant with the question, but my curiosity is, is like, where do you grow from here? And we probably just have just about 30 or 45 seconds. So maybe a quick yeah. answer we can revisit after the break. I think just reach. I mean, what we need to do is the, the number of people who can try our coffee. So we need to find a way that's scalable to get people to try our coffee. And so uh, influencers, that's an important part of it. But, I mean, we've, we've got about 18,500 five-star testimonials in the last four years. And, I, and, I, and I, would, I almost would say we have more testimonials than any coffee company in the U.S. I don't know of any coffee company in the U.S. that has more testimonials than us. Um, and, and so that's a reflection of the fact that when people try the coffee, they're passionate about it, but we're just not scratching the surface in terms of educating people about the health benefits of coffee. So it's reach, you know. Okay. Well, we're going to take a break. We're going to be right back with the KHS 1220 98.1 FM. SCVI is a tuition-free TK-12 through charter school that gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely. We offer a customized learning program built around your child's unique interests and strengths with the only international baccalaureate program in all of Santa Clarita. Our approach keeps students and families in step no matter where your learning is taking place. Be empowered to make your mark on the world at SCVI. 
To take a tour or enroll now in our one-of-a-kind program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the Law Office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the Law Office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. I'm Richard Sherman of Radius Agent, formerly of Alta Realty. I've been helping people buy and sell and save their homes in Santa Clarita for over 30 years. I also offer help with free foreclosure defense. I offer help with money to buy your home, and I'll even offer you money to help you sell your home. If you feel you're in danger of losing your home to foreclosure, don't wait. Banks will still go through with foreclosure even during the pandemic. I can save your home for free. You really do it completely for free. If you need help buying, selling, or defending your home, or if you're dealing with a foreclosure, I'm here to help. Call me, Rich Sherman, 714-1400. That's 661 or 1400. Coming to the canyon, Mark Farner's American Band, Jack Russell's Great White, Master Pussycat, The Motels, Spyro Gyra, Starship featuring Mickey Thomas, Stephen Piercy of Rat, Bullet Boys, Asia featuring John Payne, LA Guns, Marsha Ball, Young Dubliners, Australia's Thunder from Down Under, and so much more. Country nights every Thursday, and the canyon is the perfect place to host special events. Call 805 657 9201 to book yours today. The Canyon Santa Clarita, where music meets the soul. Tickets available through. Access.com. Welcome, folks, to the Backyard Masterpiece Podcast. We have Tom here, a first-time DIYer, talking about the multi-tiered rose garden he planted in his yard. How did you begin this masterpiece? Well, the first thing I did was make the call. The call? Yes, to 811. I knew my project required digging, so I had SoCal Gas come and mark my natural gas lines. Pro tip, take notes, people. Always contact 811 by phone or online two business days before you dig. Yep. Visit SoCalGas.com slash 811 to learn more. The Circus Vargas Express in Santa Clarita, May 27th for a new high-energy, action-packed extravaganza. Join us for an amazing adventure guaranteed to thrill and enchant you with fun-filled moment after moment of world-class performers, aerialists, acrobats, and comedic characters all under the big top. Two unforgettable hours of the finest in live entertainment. Don't miss Circus Vargas in Santa Clarita, May 27th through June 6th. Get your tickets now at CircusVargas.com. Circus Vargas, where memories are made to last a lifetime. Give blood and save lives. The UCLA Blood and Platelet Center is coming to Santa Clarita Thursday, May 26th from 1 to 6 p.m. at Pulcello Winery on Avenue Stanford by Rye Canyon. Schedule your appointment at ucedonor.com. Click Blood Drives and enter Pulcello in the account code box. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the Law Office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the Law Office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Welcome back. KHS 1220, 98.1 FM. We have a great guest today, Andrew from Purity Coffee. And... Some people have been calling up and trying to figure out, all right, this sounds like an interesting concept, healthy coffee. Uh, I usually go to Starbucks, but, you know, healthy coffee, I haven't heard about that one before, and I'd like to get some, and I don't know what to do. So if somebody wanted to get this coffee, since it's not, uh, you don't have shops up, you don't have wholesalers out there, how can people get this coffee? Yeah, just um, order online, puritycoffee.com, and, you know, you'll have it within two to three days. From, from the order, and it'll be roasted a couple of days ago. And uh, how long does the coffee last? So well, I mean, if I buy it today, is it going to last me for 10 years, two years, two months, yep. two days? 
um, you start seeing a drop off in, in, in qualities in the coffee qualities that we care about after about 15 to 20 days when you open the bag. All of our bags are nitrogen flushed. It's an inert gas. It means that they're fresh until you open the bag. So you can have that bag for six months in your closet and then open it. It'll be fresh for 15 to 20 days after you open it. So it's a question of uh, how much coffee you consume. And then the next question is, I think you mentioned you don't have a ground coffee. So how does this coffee come and what concept? Uh... Yeah, just whole bean coffee. And I know that's an extra level of, of, of inconvenience for some people. You need a coffee grinder. You can pick one up for you know 20 bucks as well in, in, in most uh, supermarkets. But you just need to grind the coffee fresh for the coffee that you're going to use. And um, so basically once it's... You can open it at any time, but you only got about 20 days to do so once it's open. And uh, you store it in a, yep. uh, a, a room temperature. Is that correct? Yeah, that's fine. Just uh, water is the enemy of coffee. Just not, nothing that's humid. Don't need to put it in the fridge. Um, just room temperature is fine. And, uh, yeah, you, most people go through a bag in 15 days. What's your expansion plan? Um, well, there's two, really. There's, we're going deeper in terms of products, and we're going wider in terms of geography. So deeper in terms of products is, you know, we're investing in farming and regenerative agriculture and improving the quality of the products, and then also customizing products to help with certain, uh, um, certain uh, sort of problems that people deal with. So higher chlorogenic acids, different products, uh, different compounds inside of the coffee, and then geographically we're looking at England and Australia. Um, as a natural sort of uh, next move. Thank you very much, Tracy. You had some information on the podcast. Yes, I do, guys. Just want everybody to grab a cup of Purity Coffee and download the Ask Brian podcast. So if you want to hear uh, this episode again, or if you want to listen to any of our previous episodes, go to any of where you get your favorite podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Download the Ask Brian podcast, and we'd love it if you would uh, follow us, subscribe to the podcast, and leave us a fantastic five-star review over there at Apple. We really appreciate it. All the reviews and comments and feedback are really helpful. And that is the Ask Brian podcast on all your favorite listener platforms. Thank you for being our guest, uh, Andrew. We'll have you back on again. Tracy, thank okay. you very much. Welcome out. KHS 1220, 98.1 FM. Thank you very much.